Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a quick first look at the new Villainy Inks range. I'm going to be trying a couple of them out, I'm going to tell you what I think of them, and at the end we're going to get into my final verdict, so stay tuned to the end of this video so you can see what I think about them. So firstly, I'd like to thank Zach at the Grimdark Compendium and Villainy Inks for sending me these products out to review. Now, obviously, this is a quick first look at them. I do try them all out in this video. Uh, however, there will be some more videos in the future where I'm testing them out even more, showing you some more uses that you can get out of them. So make sure you do hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on those videos. So first of all, let's jump down, let's get them unboxed and see what we've got inside. So here we have all the seven enamel colours uh, laid out for you right here. And as you can see, they come in these beautiful um, little boxes. Um, we Zach's put these like labels on and stuff with all your information. And then obviously inside you do have your bottles of the enamel. Uh, the bottles again uh, are ri everything here is super like there's been no expense spurred here like nothing feels cheap like even the bottles just feel really premium like there's literally no expense spurred um, but again you've got like your labels on with all your bits and what's finally nice <laughs> which is good because normally when i'm using enamel stuff it's like a screw top uh, and you have to like dip your paintbrush in and if i want to put something in, like a little tray or something i can't do that or God forbid I need to put it in an airbrush and I have to use a pipette. But the best thing about these is they come uh, with a pipette uh, already built into them. So you can uh, pop some to one side, put your lid back on, and you're not having to dip it back in and it's not going to dry up. So we'll quickly go over the colours um, and a little bit about the colours and you know what they're for. And a little bit later on we'll show you some of these colours in action. So I think the one that, you know, everybody's going to be quite excited to get and which is probably going to be like the go-to which is this one which is goons grime uh, which is a grime enamel wash so you know if you follow grimdark company or if you're in the grimdark community you'll have probably heard streak and grime now this is zach's version of it and what i love about this because i know he mentioned this in his launch video is that the grime streak and grime over the years they've sort of changed the recipe and it's gone a little bit more like green and if anything, like the, the standard streak and grime now to me feels a little bit like winter streak and grime, which is a little bit more green. Uh, but what Zach's done is gone back um, and he's got something very similar to the old recipe. It's a little bit more on the brown side now, which is what I love. Uh, we'll move on to some of these colours in a little bit because there's something I want to mention uh, about these uh, a little bit as we move along. Next up is Sector Rust. This is great for like some rust work or you know like putting some streaks on and stuff. And also what I love what Zach's done is rust streaks to me, yeah, it's a great product and I love the colour. But sometimes I just wish it could be that little bit more orangey saturated. Um and this is yeah, this is <laughs> this is perfect. You'll see it in action, and it is my dream colour because I don't want something that's too dark and I don't like something that's too light, and he's just hit that you know that middle zone uh, with this colour as well. Dystopian brown, it's like a brown enamel wash. You'll probably see me use a ton of brown enamel washes in my videos, so I can't wait to uh, jump into this uh, and see what this one's like. Icker of the Damned. Now this one is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. Uh, this is a black enamel wash, which is something you don't really see uh, on the market. Now, there are a few out there, like the Tamiya ones, and I've got a, a MIG one, um, but it's a little bit on the blue side. But with this, uh, it, it is the closest I've seen to like the like a warm black um, that I like. It's and the problem with like brown with black enamel washes. These days, they tend to be a little bit more on the brown side, where this is not. Um, it is literally like a really nice warm black colour. Um, and then we're moving on to like these, what I call like the wash colours uh, from the enamel range, which, oh, this is just a dream. So if you've seen my videos and you've seen me paint things like the Tyranids and things like that, you'll know that I love to use like your washers um, and stuff like that. Again, but sometimes I just wish 
somebody please make an enamel wash where you know it's like an enamel and i can get that like effect of an enamel um but yeah so he's sort of done that with these so we've got decay of death which is a, a gray green enamel wash um i've not used this one yet but i'm looking forward to using it on some like zombies and some like flesh eaters and stuff we've also got carrion crimson which is a crimson enamel wash um this is going to get some use you know you can use it in blood gore and um, just adding some like saws and everything there's so much versatility in these products um that i'm so excited to use these and obviously your last one is colia green which is like a turquoise enamel um so if you follow grimdark compendium uh, you'll know that he loves to use uh, colia green shade from games workshop and it's a color that i use quite a lot when i'm painting like flesh and um like gray army you can use it to like shadow and it's so nice now that you've got these in an enamel um but yeah so this is a, a quick close-up look uh, we're going to dive into some footage now uh, of me using a couple of these and then obviously at the end uh, we'll get to the verdict and what i think but honestly zach you've done amazing with these like the, the, it is it does genuinely feel like um a premium product so one of the first things i want to say about these products is once i started trying them out is even though they're in an enamel paint they do behave a little bit different the, the, it's strange they're like a hybrid uh, which is good uh, in a long way because you do get a lot of long working time with them um, but they do behave a little bit like an acrylic and an oil so obviously they do require a little bit of thinning um, but yeah we'll get into uh, my final thoughts on these a little bit later on so first up i tested out goons ground which i think is going to be the staple uh, the one that he originally first created uh, and the one that we're probably most going to be familiar with which is very similar to streak and grime um, so as you can tell from this piece uh, for people that know me i'm a huge fan of the last of us game and i thought it'd be cool to create a piece whereas though like some sort of nurgly cordyceps rot uh like transitioned into 40k universe uh, from the last of us and um, because the last of us it does lean a little bit towards the grim darkness and um, so i thought this would be a perfect test for it and um, so goons grime straight out of the bottle uh, obviously I, I do use this with a brush and an airbrush and they both operate really really nice it just required a tiny little bit of thinning however if you want it to go on a little bit thicker and darker you could just use it straight out of the bottle uh, but goons grime so streaking grime and i know zach mentioned this when he first released it uh, why he created this product is because over years and i've seen this as well that streak and grime even though it's such a staple uh, and a go-to in the grim dark painting it started to turn a little bit green where what zach's done with this is he's gone back to like the original recipe where it's a little bit more brown with a hint of green um but yeah um one thing i will say about these paints as well is one of the best things that i find for these is especially with that working time is i'm not sure what like chemicals and stuff is using with like the adhesion and stuff but it's really nice that you can build them like take them off use the reductive technique to take them off in layers like multiple passes you can do that because the amount of times i've painted miniatures and i've gone on and i've wiped it off and i've been like oh man like it, i quite liked it to be a filter and i've had to apply more uh, but with this you can take it down in stages which i found really really nice second up we've got ica of the damned which is a black enamel wash and now this is going to be great for people that want to use like black panel lining because there's loads of like browns and stuff out there and the thing with black is you tend to find them like i mentioned earlier that they tend to be a bit more on the brown side this is a really nice black um, so you could use it for panel lining um, and just overall like maybe adding to cloth and stuff uh, but this is one that i'm definitely going to be using in the future for like space marines and things like that and um, for, for when i did this like when i was painting this like last of us style one um but when i was because i thinned it down i got like a bit of staining with it which sort of went in my favor which i quite liked that and um, so i didn't really want to take that down i want to leave that in but obviously if you wanted to make sure that that line is perfectly dark then you can just easily wipe that away with mineral spirits next up is sector rust now this for me um i i genuinely liked this color um as i've mentioned earlier it's a bit more in line with a color that i sort of like my rust now one thing i will say about this is it does go on a little bit translucent if you want like a really dark line uh, then you might have to put a couple of layers on to be able to build that opacity up however in the way that i like to do my rust and rust streaks 
I sort of want it like this so I like to build it up um, and again because you've got that adhesion you can slowly take it off it really really helps you build up rust streaks um, but again it went on really really nice and I'll absolutely love the colour. Next up dystopian brown I was, uh, I was taken back a little bit by this because I was expecting it to be like a dark brown wash like one of the AK dark brown washes but when I opened it up um, the colour is it's hard to describe, it's more on the brown side, but it's a little bit closer to like the Reichland Flesh shade uh, with a little bit more brown in it, but I, I originally thought it was going to be like a dark brown wash, but I can tell you, I think this is going to be one of my favourite colours to use from now on, especially for like flesh washes and you can use it in ground, and it, to be fair, you could probably even use this as like a, a different colour of your rust streaks because of the colour of it, um, to get a bit of variation in your rust streaks, so I did... I will, yeah, I was taken back about this. I've not seen a colour like it before. But uh, yeah, I absolutely enjoyed uh, Dystopian Brown. Next up is another colour that I was taken back by, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, using, especially when I was painting the uh, Flesh Eaters, which was Decay of Death. Now, when we get into these other colours, which are the ones which are a bit more like the traditional washers from Games Workshop, even though they're in enamel. Uh, one thing I did notice is you do get like some of the pigments don't don't sort of clump together, but they just require a bit a uh, bit more like shaking uh, and mixing onto it. Now when it dried as well uh, for these colour ones, I did notice they went a little bit more powdery than the other ones, like a bit more chalky than uh, like the Sector Rust, Icarus Damned, and Dystopian Brown and Goons Grime. Uh, these colours went a little bit different. Now this might be due to like pigment and stuff. However, it wasn't a problem. It was something that I enjoyed working with uh, and used, and especially like on flesh eaters and stuff, and it just really enhanced it. And it's so nice to have these rather than using washers and stuff all the time. I really like that I can use the reductive technique without having to get like the isopropyl alcohol out and then burning through my paint and going back down to the plastic. So yeah, it was nice to use this. Colia Green. <laughs> this is another one that I used on The Last of Us to as, as like a filter pass. Um, and again, I did see Dark Ages workshop video and he said it is a very strong colour and it is, I can say it is very heavily pigmented. Um, and this one, because it is so heavily pigmented, I would recommend thinning it a little bit more than what you would maybe the others. Uh, just because it went on that strong, I went away using the reductive technique, I was having to do quite a few passes just to tone it down a little bit, and it did leave a little bit of staining. But again, it's, it is a really, really nice colour. Now, Carrion Crimson, this is one that I was really excited for. Um, again, when I opened it up, you got that sort of like, I want to say pigment clumping, um, but it weren't it weren't like clumping as much I just needed to thin it a little bit more than usual and I think you know testing out some of these I think this one my user error um, when I came to it but I also liked how it did that as well because when I was doing it I, I thought I like loads of different gauze and gauze effect uh, where you could get like blood um, like going up swords and stuff like that so I sort of enjoyed it and I wanted to test it out a little bit more in future on some gore uh, but again it does act as a really really nice filter but again with the Colia Green it is quite a strong shade it's not as strong as the Colia Green but again you need to be careful with this and maybe thin it a little bit more than you actually would. So there's a quick look at me testing out some of these inks and enamels um so let's get into my final thoughts what is my final verdict and would i recommend this product absolutely of course i'd recommend this product um i, I really do enjoy it do i think you should go out and get these over some of the equivalents yes um again it's how can i it's, it's hard to put into words how to describe this product and how it works i think it sits in its own little section on its own uh, which is in my eyes really really good um, because it's something new it's like a new style I can put onto my miniatures and manipulate and do stuff but again it's also going to work like your goons grime compared to your streaking grime and stuff in my eyes it's a little bit better it operates a little bit better than uh, like your streak and grime and stuff like that but again because of the way they're formulated it, it's opened like a new door possibilities if that makes sense in ways that I can start to use enamels and oils um, moving on into the future now the drying time 
if you know me, I, I don't like using oils just because of the drying time. Now with these you get a little bit longer than what you would in enamel, but get a blow dryer out and you're good, good to go. Um, so the two do take a little bit longer to dry than what like your standard enamels would, um, but we're talking minutes, we're not talking like hours, but we're talking like a few minutes and, and it's, it's good to go. One thing as well is I know a lot of people are scared of using enamels and and oils and all that sort of stuff just because uh, of the facts that you know they think it's a little bit toxic now Zach does state that compared to other brands on the market that these are the these have got the least toxicity uh, on the market at the moment and and that does and I could tell that from like the smell of them it weren't as like ammonia and you can tell but obviously you, when you're using these products you do need to take your precautions are making sure you're in a well ventilated area and uh, wear a respirator does that go to say that you have to go out and buy a respirator absolutely not there's i'm going to be honest there's been times that i've used enamels and oils and not used a respirator especially um when you're using an airbrush i would highly recommend the getting a respirator because it's going to be flinging everywhere but overall i'm i'm really 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 impressed with the line especially when some of the colors took me back uh, from what i thought they were going to be um and again is this new products and the way that they operate is a little bit different than usual are you going to go have to go out and put more work into it are you going to be put off by that absolutely not it's just the same work as what you would be putting in anyway when you're mixing it with like, or thinning it with mineral spirits um but I, I really enjoyed them. I, I found my experience really enjoyable. I know this is just a first look, and I've only tried them out on a few models, and I do want to try them out further down the line uh, and fetch you guys some videos of different ways that we can use them. Um, and the, what I found were a nice balance between, because sometimes when you get enamels, you get that chalky effect, which can be a little bit off-putting. Because these are a little bit like an oil, you don't get as much chalkiness as you would with like your standard enamels. Um, does that say that later on down the line when these bottles get older the chalkiness is going to increase? I don't know, that's something we'll have to look at a little bit later on in the future. Do you need to go out and buy every single one of the colours? That's entirely up to you and depends on what you're painting. However, I do have some favourites in here and ones that I would highly recommend. Um, first up being Goons Grime. Absolutely recommend that. That's probably one of the best ones and one of my favourite ones out of the lot and it's very... It were hard to get like a first place if you want to put it at that because Icar of the Damned as well I really really enjoyed for the panel lining and I think a lot of people are going to dig that because black enamel uh, like line washes are quite hard to come across and you don't always see them ones that are actually black they're either a brown or like a, a blue uh, another one that I would highly recommend is Sector Rust um, I know it, 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 it might take a couple of times to build up that opaque layer but for the way I like my rust streaks it works perfect for me um, but again all these products they might work different for you than for somebody else it depends again what you're painting uh, but yeah my favorite ones were goons grime icker of the damned dystopian brown and sector rust yeah, i did enjoy the other colors as well i just need to find some more uses for them i've got loads flying off of me i do want to test them out again and especially the carrion crimson with like some gore and blood effects i'm really looking forward to like adding some filters and seeing what i can come up with with that so overall i did enjoy the new villain inks range is it a game changer yes in a way it's a little bit of a game changer it's not something like you know like when you get dirty downs rust and it's completely this new product on its own but it does sort of sit in its own sub category faction if you want to call it that on its own within the enamel uh, and oil range but I would highly recommend going out, picking some of these products up and trying them for yourself uh, and seeing what you think. Because I guarantee if you've never used stuff like this before and want to step into the Grimdark universe, it will change the way that you paint. So yes, I would highly recommend this product. It's one that I am going to be using a lot more moving forward and I can't wait to delve in and again try out some of the different stuff that I can come up with. So stay tuned and make sure you are a subscriber to this channel if you want to see some more awesome stuff that we can do with these products again thank you to zach over at villain inks for sending me this and if you do want to learn more about this product uh, and some more uses for it and a little bit more if you're not sure about you know like the reductive techniques and other techniques that you can achieve with this then head over to the grimdark compendium 
uh, and check out some of the amazing videos and tutorials that they've got over on their site. So guys, thanks for watching this video. If you've got any questions, then feel free to ask me them in the comment section below or message the Grim Dark Compendium over at Villainy Inks. And I'm sure those guys will be happy to help. Again, this is just a quick first look. I am going to be testing them out a little bit more in the future. So stay tuned and I'm sure I'll do like an update video and you'll see me using these a little bit later on down the line. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.